Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So in this video, we are gonna see what if Naruto time travels with Makoto. This is part one. And if you want more, then please leave like, share, and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Uzumaki Naruto looked up as the door to the workroom was opened, and a tall, dark-skinned man stepped through the threshold. He looked rather weary and had several noticeable scrapes that the blonde didn't recall seeing when they last spoke earlier. Closing the door behind him, followed by a quick hand sign, the door flashed to dull gray for a moment before returning to its original color. I take it from your appearance, we've been located again? Naruto queried. We both knew it was only a matter of time. We're holding our own for now, as usual. It won't last for long though. It never does. The other man was moving quickly towards him, his eyes now glued to the floor near where the blonde was working. Are you sure that you know what you have to do? Naruto sighed for what felt like the hundredth time in the short span he had been setting up and replicating there. Rediscovered technique. Yes, Derui, I know what I have to do. I wish we didn't have to resort to something like this. But I'm a shinobi. I'll get it done. His dark-skinned compatriot offered a solemn nod before moving a few steps away from the platform on which Naruto was prepping the seal. If all went according to plan, they could stop the horrors of their current world and make a damn good attempt at righting various wrongs that had happened, especially events in recent memory. The only problem was that even with the power of the last of the free biju behind them, they would only be able to send one person. Derui shifted slightly as he stared at Naruto, I can try to go get the others out there and drag them in here if you'd like. To say goodbye? The blonde scowled for a moment before closing his eyes and letting his head hang. It's not a good idea. I'd rather remember everyone as they were when I talked with them last. There aren't many of us left, and I'm sure they would all understand. Naruto's expression became more solemn as he put the finishing touches on the seal. Besides, if this is successful, none of you will exist as you are anymore. Derui grunted at that they had been over this many times before. This zeal was a secret project of theirs which had taken them nearly a full year to complete. During that time their forces had gone from being a majority of shinobi from all the combined nations to a brave few who refused to give up. Scouring the ruins of Yuzushiagakur had only yielded this one useful-looking technique that was buried in a labyrinth beneath tons of rubble and would need more chakra than they had available, even considering all the shinobi still with them. As a result, using their limited Vyuinjutsu knowledge, they had to adjust it to be able to use the chakra of Abiju. Vyuinjutsu was truly a lost art, Naruto believed, since he was widely considered to be the most skilled practitioner among all the shinobi still fighting. He had only briefly studied it under Jiraiya, and to a lesser extent, Kakashi for maybe a total of a year. Unfortunately they were coming down to the wire, and everyone in their camp knew they likely wouldn't last another year before attrition wore them down to nothing. Hence the seal they had been working on it was to be a last-ditch attempt at completely altering the timeline. Of course they had no idea if it would work or not, but if they were all going to be captured or killed anyway it didn't really matter. Let's do this, Karama, Naruto mumbled to the air. Derui looked up at his blonde friend again as the teenager muttered under his breath, realizing that it was finally time. Before Naruto did anything else, however, he held out a fist towards his companion. Naruto stared at the clenched hand for a moment before grinning, bumping his own fist against the outstretched one. I didn't really want to say anything, but if you get a chance, try to help out those of us who stuck with you until the bitter end, eh? You have to ask? Naruto grinned at his friend, and Derui suddenly looked a bit sheepish. Sorry, it's just, it's fine, it's fine. Naruto waved off the apology, though not just because Derui used the word habitually. Of course I'll try though it will suck because none of you will remember me, and I'll be an old man by the time I could help anyone individually. You're an Uzumaki. Don't they have really long lifespans or something like that? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I won't look old. You will be young, I doubt you'll want to hang around with an old geezer. You worry too much, Naruto. I'm just joking. Derui chuckled as he lowered his fist. Give him hell, yeah? Naruto didn't say anything further, but kept a small smile on his face as he watched his friend walk back to the door, deactivate the seal, and leave the room without turning to look back. Taking a deep breath as the door flashed to light gray once again, Naruto began to focus his chakra into his feet, and then out below him into the seal he was standing on. Ready when you are, Karama. Very well. Hang on, I have a feeling this is going to hurt. If it does, then it does. I'm used to pain. Ignoring Karama's snort in the back of his mind, he began to concentrate. 
focusing on purifying the QB's chakra, his entire body to light up with an ethereal golden glow with the sage zeal showing clearly. The power output would be massive, as he would need to use his own chakra, as well as all of the bijus to power the seal they had. Shortly after calling upon Kurama's chakra, he felt the telltale signs of their bond start to show flashes of blue and red chakra flashed in the air, creating a golden glow, rather than what many might have expected to be a purple one. He suddenly felt exhausted as there was a bright light that began glowing at his feet. It kept getting brighter until it fully encompassed the room he was in, even closing his eyes did not block the light. Suddenly it faded to black, then he knew no more. You do realize that when we go back, my consciousness will no longer exist within you. Naruto's head snapped to look at his lifetime companion. For most of his life they had barely been on speaking terms. With the events surrounding the beginning of the Ford Shinobi World War and his temporary capture, all of that changed. Naruto's will was much stronger than Madara could have possibly fathomed, and thus managed to keep the last of the free Biju sealed away inside of himself. While they had become friends before that, Naruto's actions that day sealed the deal beyond any doubt. Don't give me that look. I can only exist at one place in time. Therefore my consciousness will go to where it exists already, depending on where in time we end up. But what about your chakra? Kurama chuckled, but it did not sound nearly as menacing as it used to. That may have been due to the fact that he had shrunk itself to be Naruto's size. Not to mention the fact that he had no reason to try to intimidate Naruto anymore. So now you wish to use my chakra? Naruto shrugged. Well, it has proven rather convenient on more than one occasion. There was light noise that came from the fox next to him, either a snort or exasperated sigh. I have no answer for you. I do not know what will happen, other than I will probably awaken inside one of my previous hosts, depending on when we arrive. But you will remember? There was a moment of silence before Kurama's voice rumbled, yes. I believe I will remember. Naruto groaned as he awoke from what felt like a jarring impact. His body felt completely drained and sore, but it wasn't nearly as bad as when Madara had tried to yank the QB out of him. He ached nearly all over, but it was especially bad along his back. Opening his eyes slowly, he blinked several times as he looked up at the bright blue sky. The moment he went to rub them, however, he realized that he could not move his arm. Panic started to set in as he tried and tried alas, to no avail. Hokage-sama. He's awake. The voice he heard was vaguely familiar, a voice he recalled hearing once upon a time. But at the same time he could not place his finger on it. The blonde was groggy for a few quick seconds as he racked his brains, trying to figure out what was going on. One of last things he could remember. It all came back at once, rushing into his mind and leaving him short of breath. The war, the destruction of Kanoha for a second time, Kurama. The seal. Time travel. You can relax, young man. I see you have a leaf Hitai 8, though I do not recognize you as one of my own. We have you bound at the moment until you can explain yourself you've made quite the ruckus. It's not every day I find a shinobi lying in a crater not far outside the village walls, after all. Upon hearing a very familiar voice that he had not heard in so long without the scratch of old age, either Naruto couldn't stop the pinpricks of tears that began to form in the corners of his eyes. He let out a barking laugh, haha. Did you, old man? He could hear a few murmurs and quiet snickers around him, until the familiar voice of the Sandame Hokage could be heard clearly once more. I don't believe I'm quite that old yet, but if you recognize my voice without seeing me, I probably am who you think I am. Naruto's lips quirked into a small smile. Saratobi Hirazan, the Sandame Hokage. You would be correct. The problem does remain, however, that I do not know who you are. Naruto opened his eyes, letting the gathered teardrops run down the side of his face towards his ears. He was on his back and was now staring straight up at a cloudless blue sky. He wanted to blurt out who he was and what he was doing so badly, but he had already discussed the problems of doing that with both Kurama and Derui. Thinking about the QB caused him to take a second to check if somehow Kurama was still sealed inside him. It barely took a moment for him to realize that the consciousness of the Biju was no longer with him, exactly as it had told him, even if a decent amount of its chakra remained. While this discovery made his spirit sag a little, he still had a mission to accomplish. Somehow. I have things I need to tell you, Naruto began, but only you alone can hear them. I'm afraid that is not possible. Naruto sighed internally, they had figured that would be a likely scenario. Unfortunately all of their scenarios had not had Naruto captured the moment he arrived. Breaking out of his bonds would have been possible eventually, but he was too tired to even bother at the moment. 
not to mention it would completely dispel any degree of established trust, existent or otherwise. Running through a mental checklist, Naruto began thinking of various offers, hoping that the legendary professor would agree to at least one of them and not simply dump him into torture and interrogation. The blonde had begun looking around, moving his head left and right. There were only a handful of Anbu around him, but not too close. The sandane was behind him, above where his head was resting, so he'd have to move his head about in an awkward manner in order to see the man. Other than that he idly noted that he was in what appeared to be a crater in the middle of the forest. Whatever happened upon his arrival must have put Kanoha into a state of alert. Or Jiraiya, or Achimaru, or Tsunade around. There was a moment of silence before the Hokage told him that they were out on village business. What about Haddock Sakumo? Even more silence followed until Zeratobi answered him carefully, his voice beginning to show signs of aggression. I'm not sure what your aim is, young man, but I'm not going to tell you about any of the shinobi in my care. Nodding to himself, Naruto figured that would be the case. He was trying to determine exactly how far back he had come, but that could probably wait until after he had gained trust. If that was even possible at this point, gather one or two other people you trust the most and a Yamanaka that you trust as well. If you want to have others around just in case, that is fine, but I can only speak of what I know to those who you trust implicitly. You can keep me bound the entire time, if you wish. There were many moments of silence, but Naruto knew the Hokage was communicating with his Anbu, as he saw many of the make hand signs that he had become very familiar with. They were going to move him into a structure nearby that was outside the walls of Kanoha. We'll be moving you someplace nearby, and I will gather those I trust most, like you say. I assume your desire for a Yamanaka is so that they can tell me if you are being truthful? Yes. If Inoichi is available, he's the one I would trust the most. But I understand if that is not possible. The Hokage hummed for a moment, then walked around to Naruto's side, so the blonde could see him for the first time. He definitely looked much younger than when Naruto saw him last, before his death. You should sleep for now, young man. Before he could understand what was happening, the Hokage had made a hand sign. Naruto's eyes focused on what seemed to be a couple falling feathers before quickly dozing off into a dreamless sleep. Naruto wasn't sure how much time had passed before he had fully regained consciousness, considering it looked as if they were in some earthen bunker. The only lights in the room came from torches on the walls, and while they were bright, he didn't have the faintest idea if the sun was still up in the sky. He was just in one big room with a single door. Glancing around, he noted that Zeratobi was in his full Hokage battle gear and was standing with his arms crossed as he chatted with a much younger-looking Shimura Danzo, who was in traditional jonin attire. In a nearby corner was a younger man, who Naruto was barely able to recognize as a young, probably mid-teens aged Yamanaka Inoichi. The young man was currently writing in a notepad, otherwise oblivious to other goings-on in the otherwise empty room. Looking at his own situation, he became aware that his arms and legs were bound in iron to a large metal chair and that the bindings were lined with suppression seals, likely to keep his chakra down. They did as he couldn't summon much, but they likely could not contain the regenerating chakra of the QB that he could still feel within himself or that of nature which gave power to his ninjutsu. Trying to make himself a little more comfortable, he leaned forward and stretched a bit, which seemed to immediately gain Danzo's attention. Here is an. He's awake. That was enough for the Hokage to quickly look at him, as well as for Noichi to stop what he was doing and stare at him too, albeit somewhat nervously. I'm afraid you've awakened faster than I expected. The last person I called on has not arrived yet. Naruto tried to shrug, but with his arms securely fastened, it probably didn't look like much more than a twitch. It's fine. I've got nothing but time anyway. That caused Hiruzen to chuckle, if nothing else. Indeed. Do you have a name I could call you? You can call me Naruto for now. I'll tell you my clan name once I know you trust me a little bit. Very well, Naruto. That sounds fair. There was barely a moment of silence before the heavy door to the room opened and another older looking male walked through the door. At first, Naruto held a brief spark of hope that perhaps Kakashi had actually survived and made it into the past as well, but that idea was immediately quelled when he realized that the man actually seemed to be taller than he remembered Kakashi being and his hair didn't appear to defy gravity like his senseis did. The man nodded at both Danzo and Hiruzen, then his gaze wandered over towards where Naruto was bound. There was no spark of recognition in the man's eyes, not that Naruto was expecting one. Very well, Naruto. Since we are all here now, perhaps you can appease a bit of my curiosity and tell me if you know who who everyone in this room is. 
Naruto nodded slowly, then moved his gaze from one person to the next, saying all of their names. The three that had never met him previously all looked at him with various degrees of surprise, from Anoichi's utter confusion, Sakumo's stony face of indifference, to Denzo's very slight eyebrow twitch. So now that we've established that you know who all of us are even without us saying a word about our identities, perhaps you can now answer us as to why you appeared outside of Kanoha's walls in the middle of a large crater. You wear the insignia of the Uzumaki and have a leaf Hitai 8, but as I mentioned previously, I have never seen you before in my life. Naruto sighed and let his head droop, then chuckled. You probably won't believe me, which is why I asked you to bring Yamanaka. But I'm from the future. There was an eerie silence that fell over the assembled group until Denzo leaned towards Zeratobi and whispered a few words that Naruto couldn't quite catch. The Hokage nodded, then asked another question. Exactly. How far into the future, Naruto? It depends on when it is now. I was born a little over a year after the end of the Third Shinobi War. I'm 19 now, so it's been at least that long since the end of that war. Saratobi looked at Danzo, then at Sakumo, and waited for both of them to nod at him in turn before facing Ruto once again. Sand and Rock have had a few skirmishes recently, but there hasn't been any declarations as of yet. The second war ended a scant few years ago. It seems we are right to prepare for another one. The blonde nodded slowly. Sand won't be much of an issue early on and later allies with us, but Kanoha didn't get involved until a lot of the battles between Sand and Rock happen in rain. Kanoha will have to declare to protect our minor nation allies of waterfall and grass, and while Rock uses a small amount of their forces to keep Sand occupied, they start to focus on us. We also have a few skirmishes with Kumo, but nothing like during the Second Great War. Danzo's rough voice not nearly as rough as Naruto remembered from the few times he heard it, but it was still somewhat gravelly posed the next question. If you were not alive during that time, how do you know the specific details about what happened? Naruto gave the Warhawk a sharp glance. History is written by the victor, isn't it? That got a chuckle out of the three grown men in the room, all of them offering nods of varying degrees. Danzo even smiled a bit, which is something he didn't ever remember seeing before, not that he had many memories of the man. So we win, then. Naruto looked at Sakumo, who was currently giving him a kinder stare than he expected from anyone so far in this time period. Yes, we win. Though I think I should keep as much secret about that as I can until the information is needed. This way if as little as possible changes, I'll know what's coming and we can prepare. Saratobi didn't look too enthused about Naruto withholding any information, but both Danzo and Sakumo seemed to think that was the best course of action, if their respective smirk and smile were any indication. Instead of speaking further, Saratobi motioned for Inoichi to come forward. The younger man did so Naruto wasn't too sure of Inoichi's current age, but he looked to be in his mid to late teens. Naruto, I can only begin to guess that you know of Inachi in the future. As my first amount of trust that I will extend to you, I have called him here. Since you asked for him, that means you know what his capabilities are, correct? The blonde nodded, then focused on the mind walker. I'll try to concentrate on my most recent memories, especially ones where I remember talking to you in the future. It should make it easier, right? Inoichi murmured an affirmative, then grabbed a nearby chair and sat in front of the time-traveling shinobi. Making familiar hand signs, he murmured the name of his technique and held his forehead. After having someone to share his mindscape with for so long, Naruto knew exactly what it felt like to have someone rooting around in his head. He did his best to line up his most recent memories about his time travels in his mind, then present them in some manner that Inoichi would be able to see and understand clearly. It didn't take nearly as long as he thought it might, as Inoichi appeared to be very skilled even now. What barely felt like two or three minutes later, Inoichi suddenly inhaled sharply and gave Naruto a rather solemn look, then immediately turned to face his Hokage. He's telling the truth, Hokage-sama. I saw quite a few of his memories, and they all match up. I did see what looked to be yourself in the future, as well as myself. Could they perhaps be carefully constructed memories? Inoichi shook his head. They are in the part of his mind where the rest of his memories are, and not things like daydreams. Anything he speaks of did happen. I see. The Hokage rubbed at his chin for a moment. Well, Naruto, it would seem that you are who you say you are. Though I am unsure if that is good or bad. What could have possibly possessed you to travel back in time? Naruto frowned, looking at the old Hokage that he remembered, other than the fact that now the man didn't look nearly quite as old as he used to. We lost the Fourth Great War. What? How? 
This time it was Denzo who spoke before any of the others. Saratobi and Inoichi both looked stricken, while Sakumo seemed more melancholy. We lost because of a lot of internal strife and issues after the near death of the god Aim Hokage. We didn't have the necessary leadership during the beginning of the war effort, and most of our initial efforts were stalled. Madara managed to control all except one of the Bijuu, and with no Senju to oppose him, the United Shinobi Army was gradually worn down and whittled away through attrition. All of the men in front of him paled as he began to talk, and there were gasps at the mention of Madara. He knew if nothing else, that would get their attention. Stopping Madara was his number one objective, after all. I came back in time to stop Madara. He's a power-hungry madman that believes he alone has the right to rule the world because of his eyes. His final plan was to put everyone in the elemental nations in a Jinjutsu, so that he would control our lives, so that there will be peace, even if it is a fake one. All of the nations banded together against him because none of us wanted to live our lives as puppets. Do you have a plan for stopping him? Everyone turned to look at Sakumo, and Naruto noted that it was the first words the man had spoken the entire time. Unfortunately, that's what I came to the past to figure out. I need to get stronger, somehow. In order to stop him. We figured that if I could also somehow help make Kanoha and our allies stronger in the past, it would be more able to stand up against him in the future. Danzo and Sakumo both nodded slowly, though Saratobi seemed to accept everything Ruto was saying with a grim smile. Naruto continued, there are some things that I can tell all of you, however there are probably other things that I should only pass by the old man first before we decide on what to do. Agreed. Saratobi accepted that, appearing relieved and ignoring Naruto's latest old man comment. Sakumo and Inoichi both nodded, the latter probably believing he wouldn't have any say on what was to come anyway. Denzo, on the other hand, didn't look terribly happy but still seemed accepting, much to Naruto's curiosity. He didn't have much interaction with the man before, but he'd heard plenty from Sai after the temporary Hokage's death. The Hokage made a gesture, and much to Naruto's surprise, Inoichi moved forward and began to release the bindings that held him attached to the chair. As he was doing that, Sakumo talked for the second time. So, Naruto. What was your ranking in the Kanoha of the future? Naruto shrugged and grinned, officially? I don't think I ever made it above Genin, at least not on paper. That's it? Why was Amir Jin entrusted with such an important job? Danzo's exclamation seemed to surprise Hiruzen, who quickly shot his friend a strange glance. Because I was the last leader of the United Shinobi Army. Danzo continued speaking, undaunted, while we can have Inoichi verify that you are, that merely deflects my question. If you were in fact a genin, why was someone of your rank placed in charge? The blonde chuckled as he stood up for the first time, rubbing his wrists and forearms. He glanced at Inoichi quickly before speaking towards the others present. I know I trust Inoichi, but do you want him to hear what I have to say? It's fine. Very well. Naruto took a deep breath, then stared straight into the eyes of Saratobi. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto. The third Jinchuriki of the QB no Yauko, the first full master of Toad Zenjutsu, the unofficial rocket aim Hokage of Kanoha, and the third supreme commander of the United Shinobi Army of the Elemental Nations. What do you mean you can't locate him? Aren't you guys our best censors? Several men and women cringed under Naruto's stern gaze. Jonin General Kakashi had taken on a risky operation to eliminate one of the Bijuu statues, in hopes of freeing the Bijuu and reducing the Tobi's power. Unfortunately Naruto was beginning to believe the whole thing was a trap, as only a few members of the expedition had made it back, stating Kakashi had remained behind so that they could get away. Naruto had since sent out a few censors, but none of them could find a trace of Kakashi's chakra. Damn it. Naruto cursed as his fists banged against the top of a nearby table. He noticed a few of the shinobi flinch out of the corner of his eyes, so he sighed and rubbed a hand back through his hair. I'm sorry guys, it's not your fault. This is just. Very frustrating. Dismissed. They all bowed and quickly moved away from him, lest they have to face his indirect wrath again. On occasion Naruto found himself wondering if his sanity was starting to slip, considering he was now one of two remaining generals of their army that was no more than a pale shadow of its former self. They were losing this fight, it was easy to see. He knew it was probably time to consult with Derui about that seal they found again, especially since Kakashi was gone. It was now or never. Here. Naruto caught the Anbu mask that was tossed to him and looked at it curiously. What is this for? The current Hokage chuckled briefly as he moved to sit behind a chair in his office. Well, I was thinking we can't just have you appearing out of nowhere. 
so I conferred with both Danzo and Sakumo for a while, and we came to the conclusion that it would be best for you to be at least recognized as an Anbu. This way any history we make up for you would seem plausible, and we can claim you have been under my service the entire time. In case anyone asks where you have been, state that the mission is classified, of course. If anyone with clearance asks, just say that you have been doing research into this Toby character who claims to be a second coming of Ichiha Madara, as you explained to us yesterday. If they have any further questions, point them to me. Naruto shrug. Sounds good. Also, since I'm an orphan, so should we just continue with that? I was thinking about telling my parents who I am, but as I think about it more. I don't think it would be a good idea. Saratobi nodded slowly. If you're already familiar with being an orphan then it makes no sense to change. I'm assuming since you brought it up you would be able to tell them now. Yes. I know who they are, but I don't know if they are really close to each other yet or not. My father is the heir, I mean will the Yandame Hokage Namikaze Minato. Hiruzen's eyes went wide before his whole face adopted a knowing look. Ah, I see. I thought you resembled Minato a bit, but I was not certain. It could prove problematic when we see the two of you next to each other, I'm afraid. Naruto absentmindedly rubbed at the back of his neck. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Any ideas? We could just chalk it up to coincidence. Though if you continue to use the Uzumaki name and claim you are an orphan, you could very well make a believable reference to the fact that you and Minato are distantly related. I would suggest talking to him about it first, though. How old are you now? I'll be turning 20 next month. That's even better. Saratobi nodded as he reached for his pipe. He is only 17, therefore even if you did somehow have the same parents, as he is an orphan also no one would be able to confirm one way or another. I understand. The Hokage nodded again, tapping the end of his pipe against his desk, and then using a small katen jutsu to cause the contents at the end to smolder. After taking a few puffs, he looked at Naruto again. So, your mother is Kashina? Naruto blinked for a few seconds, surprised. How did you know? You were wondering before, but I can confirm that she and Minato are nearly inseparable whenever they are out in the village. It has been like that ever since he saved her from being abducted by Kumadakur years ago. Besides that, while your hair and eyes resemble your father, I see Kashina's face when I look at you. That'll help confirm to her at least that you are in Yuzumaki. Assuming she puts you under any scrutiny, of course. Nodding, the blonde finally took a moment to examine the mask in his hands. A fox? You did say you were the QB's third host, correct? I thought it would be fitting. Chuckling, Naruto nodded and let his hands fall to his sides. Is there anything else you need for me or want to know? Two things. Is the QB still in you now and have you been in Anbu before? Naruto nodded slowly and unzipped his dull orange and black jacket. Pulling one of his arms out from his sleeve, he lifted up the short sleeve of his mesh shirt underneath, exposing the Anbu tattoo. As for the QB, I still have his chakra, though his consciousness is not in me anymore. It seems like the chakra is regenerating too, so that means I can still use my abilities, but I'd rather avoid using any unless it's an emergency. The QB itself is probably back inside my mom, though it agreed not to say anything to her until I initiate contact. He briefly considered using QB's name in front of the Hokage, but decided against it in the end. He'd let Kurama share his name with whomever he wanted to. Here's an item warily for a moment, probably not used to anyone being on speaking terms with Abiju, least of all the QB I see. In any case, we'll leave you solo for now, and I'll try to start fitting you into operations with other Chunin and Jonin. But I'm still a Genin. Here's an chuckled. Not anymore you aren't. I'm assuming it was just a circumstance of the time when you lived that you kept that rank. But for someone who has the experience of being a Hokage as well as a general and leader of the United Shinobi of the Elemental Nations, if you expect me to overlook that and keep you doing DNC rank missions? Not happening. Naruto simply chuckled, looking sheepish. It would be like a vacation for a little while. I know, but I'm sorry. Even though you just came out of one war, we're going to be entering another one soon. You know this as well as I do. I understand. Do you have any idea when we will enter? Our forces are on standby in rain, in case rock or sand try anything. They've been keeping most of their fights in bird country so far, so we haven't had to intervene. Other, smaller forces are garrisoned in river and grass, just in case either of them tries anything. We'll deal with moving forces to waterfall when the time comes, if necessary. Sand doesn't last long in the war, if I remember correctly. Rock is too strong for them. Speaking of. 
has my father used Horatian yet? I can't say anything by that name has been brought to my attention. What is it? I guess not then, Naruto mumbled under his breath. It was or will be the technique that enables him to end and win the war, and one reason you nominate him is Yandame Hokage. I see. Saratobi leaned back in his chair and took a few puffs on his pipe. I always thought he was talented, and in fact I have only been recently been considering people to take over when I'm done. It's probably the war end. Well, one other thing that affects your opinion about the job. Has Arachimaru already been chased out of the village? Saratobi's eyes went wide for a moment, until he remembered who it was he was talking to. No. What are you going on about now? He causes a lot of problems later. Especially for you. Naruto didn't have the heart to say that Arachimaru would eventually kill him, unless specifically asked for details. That would be one preventable death if he had any say in the matter. There were a few moments of silence before Saratobi let out a sigh, then set down his pipe and leaned forward once again, grabbing a scroll and some ink. Some of his recent comments and activities have been disturbing me, but we can discuss my student later since I know right now he is currently standing with Kanoha. For now, your standard Anbu outfit will be given to you at their main office. You know where that is? Naruto nodded. Good. I don't care what you wear, but for a while you'll need to be seen in something close to Jonin gear, while keeping your tattoo visible. People may not recognize you, but at least they won't question you. Otherwise they will have to answer to me. Now we just need to work on your history, and you need to memorize it before you leave this office. Saratobi hummed briefly as the blonde moved towards one of the nearby chairs. I guess I can start our meeting by saying welcome home, Jonin Commander Yuzumaki Naruto. Naruto blinked in pleasant surprise for a moment before smiling at the Hokage. It's good to be here, old man. Naruto chewed on his bottom lip as he wandered through the streets of Kanoha. It had been a long time since he had been able to walk through the village like this, especially since it had first been destroyed back when he was 16. They had done a very good job rebuilding it, but it just hadn't been the same. Especially once it was destroyed a second time. Another thing that had slightly unnerved him at first was seeing so many Ichiha. He hadn't gotten around to informing Saratobi about the massacre yet, but it would still be years before that would happen. On the other hand, that made it of utmost importance that he try to convince the Hokage to get the Ichiha to merge with the village, more than they currently were, otherwise they risked alienating themselves in the future. Humming as he walked along, he got the occasional glance from villagers, who would give him a small nod of acknowledgement and maybe a smile before continuing on their business. It was another big difference previously he was either completely ignored or treated like a celebrity. This right now was a nice happy medium. He rubbed at an itch on his arm, not used to having them exposed like they currently were. The Hokage had gotten him a small apartment to use, and a few sets of standard jonin clothing, along with a few sleeveless vests and a standard jonin jacket. The outfit was similar to that which most Anbu wore, but he currently didn't have his mask or arm guards on since he wasn't on duty but still needed to leave his right upper arm exposed, so that the tattoo was visible. It wasn't long before a particular scent caught the attention of his nose and dragged him to the source. Upon approach, the stand looked familiar, however it wasn't called a Jiraku. It did look like a young Tucci behind the counter, however, so perhaps he simply bought the stand or changed the name at a later date. Not wasting any time and making sure he still had his money pouch that the Hokage had given him, the blonde entered the stand and quickly sat down. Barely a second later Tucci was willing to take his order. One Maizo Raymond, please. Of course. Just a moment. Naruto leaned his arms on the counter and smiled, closing his eyes as he simply basked in the atmosphere. He normally would have ordered more, but didn't want to spoil his visit. It had been so long since he had any ramen, and he wanted to enjoy this first bowl again. Other than that, he simply wouldn't have enough money. Yet. Wow, fancy meeting you here. So Hokage-sama let you go? Naruto opened his eyes and turned in the direction where the voice had come from only to come face to face with the one and only Namaka's Minato. What were the chances? Yeah. How did you like our little act? Was it convincing? Naruto tossed the other young man a small smirk before looking back at Tucci who was currently filling his bowl. He was amazed with his own ability to keep a mostly straight face upon seeing his dad. If he hadn't met his father previously in his mindscape, he probably would have been acting like a fanboy right at the moment. Luckily he had grown up in leaps and bounds during the war and knew how to keep a straight face when he really needed to. It was perhaps a bit easier to deal with than it would have been otherwise, considering he was currently older than his future father. Act. 
Minato's head tilted to the side slightly. You mean that whole thing was staged? Naruto nodded, turned his head to wink at Minato, then faced forward again as he watched Tucci come over with his bowl of miso ramen. Smiling at the chef, the blonde thanked him, then immediately dug in, completely ignoring Minato in favor of his food. Hey. Come on, don't just leave me hanging. What did you mean about it being an act? Naruto turned to face Minato again, some noodles hanging out of his mouth. When the corner of Minato's lips began to twitch upwards into a smile at the sight of someone acting like an idiot, Naruto smirked as well and immediately slurped them up. What I meant is exactly what I said. Naruto pointed his chopsticks at Minato as he continued talking. I was testing something for Hokage-sama and it backfired. I was knocked unconscious. He wasn't sure if it was me or an actual attack though, so he had to act as if it was an attack and be cautious. When he found out it was me though, I just played along. Naruto finished his comments with a shrug and turned back to his boot again. Minato appeared to buy what he said, for the most part, and turned back to his own bowl. So I guess you can't say what it was you were testing? Naruto chuckled a little, stirring his ramen. Nope. Sorry. Not yet anyway. Hokage-sama said to direct any inquiries to him, so that's what I'm going to do. Minato continued shooting random glances at Naruto as they both ate, as if he wanted to keep asking questions, but not coming up with anything worthwhile. At least. Not until his eyes finally landed on the Anbu tattoo. Oh, so you're Anbu? I've done a few things with them, but haven't joined up. Are you out of the village a lot? Naruto nodded slowly, then finished off his bowl and set it down. All the time. It's nice to be able to sit down and just enjoy myself in the village instead of constantly running errands for Hokage-sama. So you don't run missions with others, then? I don't think I've ever seen you before. Not usually. I typically get the stuff that doesn't need a full team to complete. With the way I was trained, I'm pretty much a one-man army. I don't really need to be paired with anyone. It sucks because I don't meet a lot of people or have any friends, really. But I love my home so I'll do what's asked of me. The short speech brought Minato up short for a moment, but it didn't take long for a small grin to form over his face. One man army, huh? I wouldn't say no to making another friend, want to spar sometime? Naruto snorted, waving off the offer of another bowl from Tucci at the same time. Buttering me up so you can steal all my kick-ass moves? Friend sure, spar. No thanks. What? I would never do that. Naruto simply gave Minato a look out of his peripheral, only to see the other teenager actually giving him a hurt look. With a sigh, Naruto shook his head. He was wary about getting too close too fast. If I manage to get some free time, I'll consider it. I usually don't have any free time at all. Minato's demeanor instantly changed as his face morphed into a warm smile. Excellent. If Hokage-sama has you doing special assignments, you must be good. Most people are afraid to spar with me now, because I always win. Naruto knew what that felt like, all too well. Well then, I hope you're prepared to lose. Ha. Huh. We'll see. Oh, by the way my na, I knew I'd find you here. Naruto blinked as Minato suddenly disappeared, hidden by a large curtain of deep red hair. It didn't even take a second for him to register that this was probably his mother. As much as he would have loved to sit and chat with both of them, it would be much too soon to slip up by saying something odd, and figured fleeing the scene would be the best bet. Thankfully he didn't have to watch his future mother make kissy face with his father, as Tucci decided to be merciful and come over to hand him his bill. Not wasting any time, he paid up and thanked the chef, then stood up to leave. Hey. Wait. Wait, hold on a sec Kashina, sorry. Naruto looked over his shoulder to see Minato blushing as he tried to look around Kishina. She was pouting slightly as she stared at him, murmuring something that Naruto really didn't care to hear. Seeing as how she wasn't going to leave him alone, Naruto started to leave again, only to stop once again as he heard Minato call out again. Hey, wait up. My name is Minato, if you're free tomorrow come find me at training ground 6 at around noon, okay? Not turning around, he nodded his head. See you then. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, by the way. Nice to meet you. As soon as he finished speaking, he leaped up to the roof of the stand, and then up and over again to the building next door. He heard his mother gasp after he said his name, and wanted to introduce himself to her, but not when she was hounding all over his future father like that. He'd probably get used to it eventually, but right now he was more worried about falling out of character. He'd have to brush up on his Yuzushiagakur history some before talking to her. 
His thoughts were distracted as he noticed his mother finally walk out from the stand and look around, but not find what she was looking for him. Shaking her head slightly, Naruto noticed as she placed her hands on her hips for a moment and looked down, then turned around and walked back behind a hanging cloth of the stand. Time to go study. She'd probably be hounding him after his bar with Minato tomorrow. I wish Hiro Senen was here. He'd have this whole thing changed over in no time. Yes, he would. Unfortunately, he hasn't been around for a long time, so we'll have to make do with the limited knowledge of the three of us. Naruto sighed as he ran a hand through his shaggy hair. Derui, Kakashi, and himself had been taking turns every day trying to reconfigure the seal they found in the ruins of Yuzushiagakur, one which Naruto believed was for time travel, while the other two were skeptical at best. Kakashi was worried about even attempting it and didn't want to waste time thinking about using it since it needed what they estimated to be the chakra of more than 100 shinobi with decent chakra pools. And that was just to get it started. They had no idea how much it would need to actually do anything. Their only chance at actually making it work was for them to adjust it so that it could use the chakra of Abiju like they were doing. The only problem is that it was taking so long and their forces were getting smaller every day. Naruto's view in Jutsu training had progressed slowly, and he didn't even truly start until after the war had already started. The saddest part was that of those not caught in the Red Moon Jinjutsu, he was the most knowledgeable person they had. Kakashi. Do you think we can pull this off? The fatigued general rubbed at his stubble-covered chin and sighed, he had stopped bothering with the mask long ago. At least it felt like it had been forever. I hope so, Naruto. I really hope so. You heard what I said. He's another Yuzumaki. So you believe this man's words without question? Kashina pouted, looking at her friend as they walked side by side towards the training grounds. It was a little past noon, so if this other Yuzumaki person was at all punctual, he should have been sparring with her boyfriend for a while now. Of course I question it. I just got caught up in the excitement of another Yuzumaki being in the village. There used to be a lot of us, until the second war. Everyone who was in Konoha went home to defend it, only to be killed. I just had a feeling that some had managed to flee and survive somewhere. Kashina's friend, Ichiha Makoto, looked at her companion with obvious empathy. Are you still upset about not being allowed to go there? Of course. If I had been there with the QB, Yuzushiagaku would still be here today. We've been over this. You were 12, Kashina. They wouldn't risk you. The redeed simply growled, but did not comment further. She knew they had made the right choice by keeping her in the village for the duration of the second war. It was likely that Kumo attacked them for that very reason. Granny Mito was on her deathbed, and they had to pull the QB out of her. It would take years before Kashina was able to use even a fraction of the QB's power, and Kumo must have known that. Yuzushi Agakur was attacked and wiped off the map in less than a week. There was no time for Konoha to get adequate forces there in time to help defend. Even if she didn't know exactly who her parents were, she saw the Uzumaki clan as her extended family. To know that they were all gone really hurt. But now there was someone in the village who claimed he was also an Uzumaki. The problem was that he had blonde hair, when a large portion of the Uzumaki she remembered had red hair. Of course, there were a few with different hair colors like blonde and brown and black, and there was even one strange girl with dark green hair who she remembered seeing now and then, but they were definitely the minority and typically married in. It was the same thing with the Achiha and the Hyuga or most large established clans for that matter. Hello Kashina? Are you listening? The redeed snapped to attention, offering Makoto a sheepish look. I'm sorry about that. I was just thinking about the past. The raven-haired woman nodded slowly. I understand. Just pay attention to where you're walking. You almost ran right into that tree a few paces back. I wasn't about to stop it from happening. Hmm, <laughs> that would have been funny. For me, yes. It probably would have hurt you. I'd still laugh at myself for being an idiot. Mikoto snorted and shook her head, a wan smile stretching across her face. I can only imagine when you have kids, what kind of knuckleheads they are going to be. As if on cue, there was a crashing noise that came from the trees above the two women. A moment later, two black and yellow blurs fell to the ground near them and stopped when one of them began to yell out, whoa whoa whoa. Time out. The blonde that Kashina faintly recognized as the man from the Raymond stand yesterday was crouched on the ground right in front of them, with Minato slightly crouched behind him and a triple prong kunai in each hand in a reverse grip. Upon further inspection, both of them were breathing heavily, though the one with whisker marks on his cheeks seemed a lot worse for wear, if the messy state of his clothing was any indication. Why are we stopping? 
Minato's back was to the two women, so he likely hadn't registered they were there yet. Naruto chuckled. We have innocent bystanders here now. I don't want these two lovely ladies to get caught in our crossfire. Minato's eyes went wide, and then pale as he finally whirled around then registered that Kashina and Makoto were standing there, looking at the two boys. Ah hey, uh, Kashina. I'm sorry, I didn't even. Makoto Chan too? I was so focused on fighting, I haven't been able to spar like this in so long that I he didn't get to finish as Kashina walked over and gave him a quick peck on the lips. It's fine, Minato. I know how you get when you find something or someone that intrigues you. Minato blushed very slightly and nodded, but chose not to say anything. It didn't take long for Kashina's focus to shift from her boyfriend to the new arrival. She quickly noted that he was the tallest one among them when he finally stood up. Not only that, but he had the same hair color and eyes as her boyfriend, only his face wasn't quite as chiseled. It was more rounded. Those marks on his cheeks too. They definitely stood out, but in a cute sort of way. So, are you really in Uzumaki? The new arrival in front of her merely shrugged his shoulders and gave her a small grin. Well, Hokage-sama has pretty much raised me since as far back as I can remember, and he always said I was in Uzumaki. He said my mother was from Yuzushiagakur and died serving Kanoha, but he doesn't know anything about my father. He took me into his care when my mother died, and I've been serving him ever since. Did you know her name? Maybe I can find out who your dad was. Naruto shook his head negatively. I've never asked, and Hokage-sama has never offered it to me. I figured there was no point in wanting something that I'd never have a need. That's a pretty sad way to look at it. Kashina could tell from looking into his eyes that he didn't really mean what he said. She couldn't quite place her finger on it, but he seemed to be too. Happy. Compared to the solemn words he was saying. You should ask Hokage-sama to tell you then. I bet I could find out more about her. Oh really? How would you do that? She didn't think he really looked smug as he said that, but from the twitch of his lips and the light in his eyes, it was almost as if he was goading her. As if he was privy to some joke that only he heard or knew about. I happen to be in Yuzumaki as well. Most of the information from Yuzushiagakur that could be recovered was brought here and placed under my care, since as far as I know I am or was the only Yuzumaki still in Kanoha. Naruto seemed happy, but not in a way she was expecting. Instead of immediately agreeing to go ask the Hokage about his mother, he simply shrugged. Well, I'm just glad to know that I'm not the only Uzumaki around anymore. Me too. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Naruto chuckled. I'm 19. I'll be 20 next month. You're older than me. Kashina offered Naruto a mischievous grin, since you're all the family I have left, that means I get to call you Nikki. Naruto's face went completely blank before he burst into laughter. He was laughing so hard that after a few seconds he bent over, clutching at his stomach. Looking up briefly to see the pout on Kashina's face, he started laughing even harder. What? Kashina began to whine. I've always wanted a big brother. Why are you laughing? Naruto's laughs eventually began to subside, and he chose to lean against a nearby tree for support as he wiped at his eyes. Ah. Haha. <laughs> Nothing, sorry. It's just you were so serious one minute, and then the next you started calling me a Nikki. I just wasn't expecting that. You seem to have accepted me rather quickly, too. The Redeed accepted this explanation, though she had since placed her hands on her hips and stared at him expectantly. I'll go verify your story with Hokage-sama the next time I see him. Otherwise I don't care. This is just too exciting, so. Can I? Chuckling briefly yet again. Naruto nodded a few times as he slowly pushed himself forward again, away from a tree. Sure. I'd be honored if you called me that. Yay. Kashina gave him a big smile, then promptly ran over and gave him a quick hug. It was a little awkward for both of them, and she had already pulled away before he could even consider returning the gesture. Giving him a small wink, she then turned around and started fussing over a very slightly roughed up Minato. Naruto just crossed his arms over his chest, smiling as he watched the interaction, completely unaware of the other person nearby, until she cleared her throat and began speaking. So, you now have a new little sister of sorts. You seem pleased, though I can tell you from experience she will be more trouble than she is worth. Naruto blinked as he turned his head to look at the speaker. His eyes settled on a very attractive young woman, probably around his age if he had to guess. She had long black hair that was currently held up in a ponytail, and very dark brown, nearly black eyes. As he looked at her, Naruto realized that she reminded him of someone, but he couldn't quite place it. 
She appeared to be amused at the interactions from before, and her voice held a teasing tone to it. Is there something on my face? Naruto blanched, waving his hand quickly in dismissal. And no. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stare. You just sort of reminded me of someone, and I was trying to figure out who. Ha. Huh. I thought it was just Kashina. Do you use Amaki always tend to space out a lot? Naruto nervously scratched at the back of his head. Not that I'm aware of. Sorry again. Whatever. The woman waved her hand dismissively, though there was still a small smile on her face. As for looking familiar, my father is the head of the Achiha clan. She made an obvious glance at his exposed upper arm and the tattoo on it, so if you are in fact Anbu, you've likely seen him often. That's probably where the familiarity comes from. Naruto nodded to her he had recognized that she was an Achiha by the fan symbol that was on her casual shirt, which just so happened to be in the middle of her chest. It was hard to pry his eyes away, as he had a healthy appreciation for the female figure. His godfather taught him the things he should not do, and number one was letting your eyes wander when talking to a woman when it wasn't appropriate. Unless she asked you to, of course. From the brief glimpse he had been able to get before talking to her, even if she was an Achiha, it was obvious she was very attractive. It really was too bad that he was trying to remain as detached as possible from society, so he didn't mess up the timeline too badly. Still, there was nothing stopping him from being polite. Trying to keep his eyes focused on her face, he offered the woman a grin. Well, I should probably drag Minato back into our spar that I stopped. It was nice talking to you. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, by the way. The black-haired woman's smile turned into a smirk. I know who you are, Kashina couldn't stop talking about you on the way here. I'm Ichiha Makoto, heir of the Ichiha clan. Perhaps we will speak again. Bye for now. As she offered a wave before turning and calling out for Kashina, Naruto hoped that she didn't see his face pale after he heard her name. While he didn't recall ever meeting her before, the name was one he easily recognized. He had just been checking out Sasuke's mom. That was just plain wrong on so many levels, right? Saratobi sighed as he rubbed at his forehead. Reports had been coming in that skirmishes between rock and sand had been becoming even more numerous over the last week. So far Kumo had remained tight-lipped about the whole thing, apparently their old Zendim Raikage was not eager to get involved with any wars, so soon after Kano had decimated them in the last one, Mist appeared to be caught up in the middle of a civil war that had broken out. They lost their Nidei Mizukage near the end of the Second Great War, and there were two people claiming to be the Sandei Mizukage, if the reports were to be believed. 